Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today I'll be talking about a coin that I think is going to be absolutely huge in 2018 and beyond. And that is none other than the coin Zebi. Zebi is a blockchain project that already has a working product that is being used not just by industrial investors but by a government. Zebi is founded by a group of very smart people from Oxford, MIT, Stanford and more. Their resumes include previous high positions in Google, Uber, Amazon, Microsoft and Oracle. As a coin, Zebi is a very new coin that was only launched on the markets about two weeks ago. The token price is still very low and is not listed on any major exchange yet. I think this is a coin that is very undervalued and underrecognized at the moment and has a potential to explode in the future. To learn more about Zebi, keep watching this video. Zebi describes itself as blockchaining India's big data. Let me explain what this means. Many times when we think of the word big data, we think of storing large volumes of data. But actually the term big data means a little bit more than that. I like SAS definition of big data, let me read it out to you. Big data is a term that describes the large volume of data, both structured and unstructured, that inundates a business on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's not the amount of data that's important, it's what organizations do with the data that matters. Big data can be analyzed for insights that lead to better decisions and strategic business moves. So big data is not just the storage of large volumes of information, it is also the processing and retrieval of the information. Think of it as not just having a library, but having a library and a librarian. India is a country that is growing very, very fast, both in terms of its number of people as well as its technology. Currently, India has 1.34 billion people, of which over 1 billion of them have digital identities. They have 800 million digital natives and over 462 million internet users, which makes them the second biggest internet user base in the world after China. However, the digital infrastructure of big data is struggling to keep up with the growth in India. As a result, problems are arising. The first problem that is arising is data leaks. Just last year in 2017, there were multi-million dollar leaks of personal information from both mega corporations as well as the Indian government themselves. So data security is a major issue with big data. The next problem is about data tampering. So 60% of all Indian court cases are disputes over land titles. Imagine that. In the Western world, we find it hard to have a dispute over a land title in the first place because there should be a title deed that clearly points out who owns the land. But in India, that data is not secure and people are tampering with the data, even the data that is stored by the government, and they are altering it to claim their own land. That's crazy, right? But it is happening and 60 to 70% of all court cases in India are land disputes. It's an enormous burden on your judicial system. Another problem that is happening is data hacks. This is pure hacking to steal funds and the example is Equifax who lost an astronomical $4 billion from hacks last year. Identity theft is another problem where hackers are stealing personal details to commit various types of fraud. It is estimated that currently about 19 people fall victim to identity theft every minute and identity theft is causing consumers more than $16 billion annually. The last problem is data misuse. Data misuse is where people who are trusted with the data are misusing it or using it without the individual's permission. One good example is Bharti Airtel last year where they used the electronic KYC of Adha customers to open payment bank accounts without the customer's consent. That's crazy. How can they do that? But the fact is that they did and it happened. So because of all these problems, someone needs to provide a solution to managing and protecting big data, and that is where Zebi steps in. When Zebi first started in 2015, they actually started as a company that was purely focused on big data management. They didn't start as a blockchain project, but very quickly as a big data management company, they realized that they needed a technology that would offer them, firstly, speed in transactions. Secondly, reliability and temper proofness. It means once you record the data, no one can go and change the data. 
Thirdly, they needed a system that was secure and hacker-proof. And lastly, they needed a degree of data democracy. So very naturally then, when they looked around, the only technology in existence that provides all of the above is blockchain with its decentralized nature. So Zebi integrated blockchain into their system in late 2015. And currently, they already have a working prototype that is used in large scale of partnership with the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. And is also used by over 200 hotels to create an up-to-date database of their guests. And this will include prominent hotel chains like Novotel. Now, currently, Zebi's main work is actually with land titles and hospitality, meaning hotels. The state police has actually made it mandatory for hotels to use Zebi because what was happening up to this point is that hotels were required to submit a paper list every day of all the guests staying in the hotel to submit it to the police department daily so that the police could cross-check to make sure that the hotels weren't housing any criminals. But because all of this was done by paper, it was taking an enormous amount of time and as you can imagine, it was a very inefficient process. But now with Zebi, not only is the data collected digitally and automatically, it is also processed by Zebi through smart contracts so that the only names that are flagged are the names that are concerned. Since they started in 2015, Zebi has picked up a lot of momentum. They've had a lot of media coverage and besides Andhra Pradesh state, which is known as the tech state of India, they are also part of what is known as the Smart City Mission, which is an Indian government multi-billion dollar incentive to develop 100 technology smart cities by 2020. So we're expecting Zebi to be expanding to other cities in India very, very quickly. And the team has also expressed that they are currently in discussions with other countries as well. So the potential scope of the whole Zebi project is simply ginormous. Now, taking a little bit, uh, taking a deeper look into the attack, this is how Zebi works. Zebi has two parts to its technology. The first part is known as the Zebi chain and the second part is the Zebi data gateway. The Zebi chain, as you can see from the diagram here, is a blockchain structure that is made up of two chains. It is made up of a private chain and a public chain. The private chain is a custom-made chain that is designed by Zebi, and that is where all the big data from the government departments will be processed and stored on. Now, each government organization will have its own private blockchain that is custom-made, so then it's the data that they put on it is totally under their control. So owners of the data will retain control of the data. And this is very different model from the other blockchain projects where once your data gets put on the blockchain, it is put on an open public ledger and you don't really have any control over who has access to your data. The actual architecture of the private chain is still private and secret because it is a technology that Zebi is still improving and working on and Zebi wants to patent this technology and later to create its own public blockchain. So for those reasons, it cannot release the details now. What I could find out from all the interviews that the CEO has had is that it is currently using a proof of authority consensus and they are running at a few hundred transactions per second. But he did say very clearly that they will scale to much higher transaction rates in the future and they are also exploring other consensus models like proof of stake or depots for the public version. Now, even though all the data is stored on the private blockchains, a hash or a very small portion of that data will be stored on the public blockchain, which for them currently is Ethereum. The reason for doing so is to make the data tamper-proof. Because if you only store data on the private blockchain, if something was to happen to the private blockchain, the data will be damaged. But by having a check on the public blockchain, which is open so that no one can change the data there, the data is then made 100% untamperable. The second feature of the technology is known as the Zebi Data Gateway. The Zebi Data Gateway is basically an API as well as a highway for the information that is stored on the private blockchains to be processed and then distributed to the relevant requesters or individuals. Now, how the Zebi system will earn money is threefold. They will earn money first from storage and then extraction and then users. So companies using Zebi will have to pay a license or subscription fee to even begin storing their data securely on the private blockchain. And then every time that they or someone else wishes to access that data just to draw the data out, they will have to pay support fees. 
But just because they draw the data out isn't enough for them to use the data, they will also need to process the data, example to do a transaction. So the actual processing of data will then incur another fee. And even though it sounds like there's a lot of fees, it's actually very, very cheap. Every process will use Zebi tokens, so there's a lot of use of the tokens on the system. And given blockchain prices, the is very, very cheap. It's only a fraction of the cost that the company would pay if they were to just simply store the data on an average cloud server. So not even processing or anything, just simply storing it on a centralized cloud server would cost them much more than using Zebi technology. This is the team that's behind the project. In my opinion, Zebi has an all-star team and I'll run through a few of their resumes with you. Their founder and CEO is Babu Munagala, who previously worked as a director of software development at Oracle for 19 years. Their co-founder and board member is Sudha Kupam, and he was the managing director as well as the vice president of Intel Capital, and he also has very rich experience as an advisor to different technological projects. He is also a, currently a managing partner at Epsilon Venture Partners, which is a very well-known uh, venture uh, capital partnership in um, blockchain. Some of the other resumes of the team briefly include Kayan Mapunami, who previously worked as an enterprise architect with Intel and is currently the CEO of Pi Data Center. Uh, their VP of engineering is Pana Ariga, and he previously worked at Tata, a Dell subsidiary, and is also a manager at Oracle. Gopal Bang is their in charge of business operations. He was previously the operations manager at Hitachi before founding his own offshore shared services team. And you can go through the resumes of the rest of the team yourself, but it's definitely, in my opinion, a top-notch team with a lot of success and experience in their careers behind them. This is their advisors, and it's a big team of advisors. In fact, this is the first time I've seen a project who will show more of their advisors than their team members on their website. Some of their notable advisors include Vasu Pama Saran, who has held senior positions at companies such as Uber, Microsoft, Nokia, and Siemens. He also has a PhD in computer science from the University of Maryland. Rao Supraranami is the principal engineer and principal engineering manager at Microsoft. Murala Aburi is the managing director at Gretuco Asset Management, as well as the ex-vice president of JP Morgan. Pralan Tota, he's the senior vice president of Wells Fargo, the ex vice president of Charles Schwab, an ex regional director of PayPal, and an ex director of Capital One Services. Chandra Malipetti is involved in the hardware quality and reliability engineering of Facebook, as well as a previous engineering manager of Amazon Labs. So, as you, I mean, this is a super impressive list of advisors, guys. Their partners include Talk Capital Partners. Talk Capital Partners is a very familiar name for by now for those of us on this channel. Talk is a venture capital company who invests in blockchain projects, and their previous picks for blockchain projects have all been winners. Their portfolio includes projects like Nucleus Vision, Icon, OneChain, Wabi, and other top projects. Upkrada is a urban development authority under the state government of Andhra Pradesh. And now we come to their roadmap. Uh, their roadmap is a fairly long roadmap that goes all the way to 2020 and focuses a lot on the technical aspects of the project. Some notable milestones that we can look out for or should look out for include Zebi Pay, which will be their payment gateway that will also convert Zebi into Fiat, which is expected in the second quarter of 2019. Zebi Verify is an API for education and employment verticals. I'm guessing this is something of the equivalent of a LinkedIn profile, but on the blockchain. Now, the Zebi project uh, roadmap goes all the way beyond 2020. Okay? The real roadmap for this project, in my opinion, is not their tech development, but their partnerships and real-life use cases, which I think is going to explode. Big data is a technology that every country, every government needs. And Zebi has very rightly identified that only blockchain currently offers the immutability and security. They have first movers advantage and they are already in discussions with other countries. And if their Zebi technology works in, in India, which it looks like is, is working well in India, then the chance of other countries adopting Zebi is very, very high because it would save them the risk of uh, spending billions of dollars to try a new technology that might not work. And all of this potential about Zebi with government partnerships is separate from its future potential as a blockchain platform. 
Now, traditional blockchain platforms currently are public, meaning open ledger for anyone to see. And to be honest, even though I personally as an individual user have nothing to hide, even I am getting tired of the fact that when I pay someone, they can trace back my account from Etherscan and see my entire account, including what other coins I hold and how much. It's like showing your bank account to the whole world with every transaction. So I personally would really look forward to a blockchain which like Zabby has some offer of privacy where my data can be kept private unless I deem otherwise. So I personally think that as a public blockchain in future, Zabby has a lot of potential in the blockchain space as well. So in conclusion guys, I don't like this project, I love it, okay? It's a project that already has a working product, government partnership, great team and advisors, good capital firm investment, a lot of potential to grow in both its terms of partnership and technology. It's based at a super low price that is not listed on any major exchange yet. To me, it seems like all the stars are lining up for Zebby to be a great buy currently. At the time of this recording, Zebby's token is currently sitting at about 13 cents on the market and the whole market cap of the project is only 61 million. I think it's a steal. This project will easily be a multi-billion dollar project in the future in my humble opinion. Of course, it is just my personal opinion. I'm not a professional and this is not a professional video or professional advice. So please always do your own research and make your own decisions. Well, that's it for our Zebby review, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, do give us that like and subscribe. And if you would like to support me as a content creator, you can also give me a donation in the links below and it would really bless me. And finally, do join our Telegram group where we have great discussions and many coins like Zebby being brought up in the community, which unfortunately, I don't have time to review them all. My dream is to do reviews like this for you guys full time. So I want to say a really big thank you to everyone who has been liking, subscribing, commenting, commenting, donating, and supporting us in any and every way. You guys are simply the best. Have a great start to your weekend, guys, wherever you are, and we will catch up with you again soon.